Have tanks, those colossal beasts of modern warfare become obsolete in the face of today's military technology? It's a question that has sparked a great deal of debate in recent years, particularly as we witness the evolution of warfare in the 21st century. Tanks, as we know them, have come a long way since their inception in World War I. These steel behemoths, initially designed to traverse the muddy trenches of the Great War, have transformed over the decades into high-tech, heavily armored vehicles capable of delivering devastating firepower. In World War II, tanks played a pivotal role on all fronts, the infamous German Panzer divisions, the resilient Soviet T-34S, the robust American Shermans, each tank was a testament to the technological leaps of its respective nation. Then came the Cold War, an era of rapid technological advancement. This period saw the birth of the M1 Abrams, the main battle tank of the United States Army and a symbol of American military might. While the Abrams has served the US well in various conflicts, it's now facing a dilemma. The Abrams, an aging Cold War design, struggles to adapt to the unique terrains and challenges of modern warfare such as the Pacific. This brings us to the Russo-Ukraine War, a conflict that has become a proving ground for modern military technology. It's here that the role of tanks in modern warfare comes under scrutiny. How do these steel giants fare against sophisticated anti-tank systems and drone technology? But with the rise of modern weaponry, do these steel giants still hold their ground on the battlefield? Let's delve into the Russo-Ukraine War to find out. The Russo-Ukraine War serves as an intriguing case study for the relevance of tanks in modern conflict. The war, which has been ongoing for several years now, has seen the use of tanks in various capacities, with both sides employing these armored beasts in their strategies. On the Ukrainian side, we saw the deployment of the T-64 and T-84 Oplot, both formidable machines designed for the rigors of modern warfare. These tanks were used primarily in defensive roles, creating a formidable barrier against the Russian forces. The Russians on the other hand, brought their own heavyweights to the fray. The T-90 and T-72B3, both stalwarts of the Russian armored divisions, were used in offensive operations, aiming to break through Ukrainian lines and establish a foothold in the contested regions. The effectiveness of these tanks, however, was a mixed bag. While they certainly proved instrumental in several key battles, their vulnerabilities were also laid bare. Advances in anti-tank weaponry, such as the American-supplied Javelin missile systems, proved to be a significant threat. These advanced anti-tank systems, capable of top attack profiles and precision strikes, made the once impervious tanks seem almost fragile. Several instances saw these armored goliaths taken down by single javelin hits, their thick armor proving no match for the missile's shaped charge. Moreover, the urbanized terrain of the conflict area further complicated the role of tanks. The close quarters nature of urban warfare often negated the tank's range advantage, making them easy targets for infantry-based anti-tank weapons. However, despite these challenges, the tanks were far from obsolete. They played a crucial role in many operations, their mere presence often enough to deter enemy advances. Their firepower, mobility and psychological impact made them an integral part of the theater of war. The Russo-Ukraine War paints a complex picture of tank warfare in the modern era, but it's not the whole story. Modern anti-tank weaponry such as manpats and the javelin system pose significant challenges to tanks on the battlefield. To understand the threat these weapons pose let's first take a closer look at their functionalities. Manpats or man-portable anti-tank systems are lightweight and easy to carry, giving infantry the ability to take down armored vehicles. They're often equipped with heat-seeking technology, allowing them to home in on the heat signatures of tanks and other armored vehicles. The Javelin system on the other hand is a fire-and-forget missile with a unique top attack mode. This means that once a target is locked and the missile is fired, the missile guides itself to the target. The top attack mode allows the javelin to strike where the armor is weakest, usually the top of the tank. Now let's consider the Russo-Ukraine war as a case study. The conflict saw extensive use of these systems, especially the javelin, which was supplied to Ukraine by the United States. Reports suggest that these weapons were highly effective in neutralizing Russian armored vehicles. The javelin with its top attack mode was particularly devastating. It could bypass the reactive armor and other defenses on the tanks, striking them at their most vulnerable point. This often resulted in the complete destruction of the tank and, in many cases, the loss of the crew inside. 
The Manpats, on the other hand, provided infantry with the ability to engage armored vehicles on their terms. The man portability of these systems meant that they could be carried and deployed quickly, often catching tanks off guard. In this context, both these weapon systems have shown their ability to neutralize the advantages of tanks. The heavy armor and firepower of tanks, which once made them seem invincible, can now be countered by these relatively lightweight and portable systems. These modern weapon systems demonstrate that tanks are no longer the invincible powerhouses they once were. So, where does this leave tanks in the grand scheme of modern warfare? Let's delve into that. The future of tanks and warfare is a subject of continuous debate among military experts and strategists. The rapid advancements in technology and shifts in military strategy are forcing a rethink of the tank's role on the battlefield. Consider the U.S. Army's dilemma in designing a next-generation tank that can effectively fight in both Europe and the Pacific. The current main battle tank, the M1 Abrams, is an aging Cold War design. It's not suitable for the terrains and challenges of the Pacific, and is vulnerable to new threats such as drones and top-attack anti-tank missiles. The Army Science Board recommends that the next-generation tank be lighter, more mobile, and have better protection against advanced threats. Several alternatives have been assessed, from a 60-ton tank with a 130mm gun, to a 40-ton light tank with a heavy cannon, to a 30-ton robotic wingman vehicle armed with a hypervelocity missile. The Army has been searching for a next-generation tank for two decades, but there's a lack of analytical capabilities for its development. Meanwhile, rocket artillery, a descendant of the Soviet Katyusha rocket launcher used in World War II, is proving to be a game-changer on the battlefield. Modern versions are highly computerized and accurate, with precision munitions guided by GPS and inertial systems. The evolution of tanks will also be influenced by geopolitical factors. For instance, Turkey's role in mediating between Ukraine and Russia during the Russo-Ukrainian War and its interests in maintaining a balance between global powers might impact its military strategies and the type of weaponry it invests in. The future of tanks is likely to be a blend of traditional and modern elements. We might see more unmanned vehicles and tanks with advanced AI capabilities. They might become smaller and more agile, with enhanced protection systems to counter newer threats. But will they become obsolete? Whether tanks will become relics of the past or continue to evolve with the changing face of warfare is a question only time will answer. So, are tanks becoming obsolete in modern combat? This question has been at the heart of our discussion today, and as we've seen, it's not a simple yes or no answer. Rather, it's a complex issue that is deeply intertwined with the evolving realities of modern warfare. We delved into the Russo-Ukraine War as a case study, examining the role tanks played in this conflict. We saw that despite the changing nature of warfare, tanks continued to have a significant presence on the battlefield. Their ability to provide heavy firepower and protection for infantry remains an invaluable asset in certain combat situations. However, we also explored the threats posed by modern anti-tank weaponry. Systems like manpats and javelins represent a new wave of technology that can penetrate the armor of even the most advanced tanks. These weapons are leveling the playing field, making tanks more vulnerable and challenging their dominance on the battlefield. We then ventured into the future of tanks, considering the possibilities and challenges that lie ahead. The U.S. Army's quest for a next-generation tank illustrates the ongoing relevance of these vehicles, but also the necessity for innovation. The need for lighter, more mobile tanks that can withstand advanced threats is clear. So, are tanks becoming obsolete? The answer is nuanced. In some respects, yes, their traditional role is being challenged by new technologies and strategies. But in other ways, tanks are evolving and adapting to these challenges, finding new ways to remain relevant in the face of changing warfare dynamics. The debate still rages and perhaps the final chapter of the tank story in modern warfare remains unwritten. For now, these steel giants continue to roll on the world's battlefields, a testament to their enduring, if contested, relevance.